Today, we're gonna be making this sound. What is going on Rocket Powered Sound Designers? For those of you that are new to this channel, I just wanna go ahead and welcome you to the best channel on YouTube for serum tutorials. Now, if you guys are interested in weekly serum tutorials, make sure you go ahead and click that subscribe button. But without further ado, let's go ahead and jump straight into the video. Now, typically, we're gonna be running frequency modulation. Okay, well, in this sound, we're running frequency modulation. Now, typically, we're gonna be running it from a host oscillator that is generally a sine waveform. That's typically what we're using here. But today, we're switching it up a little bit. We're gonna be using Monster 2 as our host for the FM. Turn up the wave tilt position. position, And we can really start to see this thing move and the sound. But you know, I found the sweet spots around 70% um, here for, you know, that's just this, the position that I'm gonna be using. It's completely up to you what you guys wanna do, but this is what works for me. So anyways, we need to run FM from oscillator B. So, but oh my gosh, there's nothing to run it on because oscillator V is not turned on. So go ahead and turn on oscillator B, of course, and drop the level down to zero. And now we are just running it. We're intercepting the signal from a sawtooth waveform at a 180 degree phase that is inverted. That's what this is. It's not our typical sine waveform. The default, or not so, sine, sawtooth, I'm sorry. Um, this isn't our typical sawtooth waveform. The default is just a little bit weird here. So now we're gonna go ahead and go into our basic shapes and boom, we get a sine waveform. Typically, the roles are gonna be reversed. We're running um, FM from a sine that is a host and then we're intercepting a signal um but today we're switching it up a little bit we're rocket powered sound designers we're the new breed of sound designers we write the rules baby so um yeah we're gonna go ahead and modulate the frequency modulation go ahead and put our low frequency oscillator number one on there and you can go ahead and make whatever shape that you desire in here I'm just gonna show you what I'm gonna be doing for the tutorial's sake. But like I said, guys, it's completely up to you. It's completely up to your imagination, in fact. <laughs> All right. Okay, I'm not trying to bore you guys too much here. Just trying to get the job done for the most part. All right, that's pretty good. Doesn't sound too good, I know, but bear with me, guys. Bear with me. So now we're gonna go ahead and drop the level down on oscillator A to the point where there is no sound being audible. Go ahead and drop our low frequency oscillator number one onto the level. Oh yeah, and now we're talking. Now the FM sounds like garbage, so we need to metallicify this thing. We just do that by turning up the octave and the pitch differential on the FM between the signal when it's positive one and the host instantly creates that classic metallic, almost sounds squarefied sound. Perfect, just like that. That is what we're going for. Now into the, uh, the host here, the sine waveform, we're gonna put on a sync and the sync is one of my favorite tools in the warp selection. See, the, the sync, basically allows you to have complete control over um, the said pitch, I don't wanna say pitch, but um, pitch of whatever waveform you have it on, because as you can see, the more we turn it up, the more copies, or the more cycles, I should say, of the waveform are gonna be played in a single cycle, which, you know, obviously will turn up the pitch positive one. Well, depending up. So right now it's positive one, now it's positive two, now it's positive three, positive four. So basically, however many waveforms we have in here. Um, sorry, this is this is four. So depending on how many waveforms we have um, in here, you could tell by the percent. So right now it's four point zero five percent higher. So yeah. Anyways, that's enough rambling about that. Go ahead and modulate the sync, and it's gonna create something really cool that sounds like this. Oh 
Okay. Sounds like some must die kind of stuff here. Now, here's a filter that's really going to be changing the game. We're going to turn on PP. Haha, -ha, I know. It's so funny. I said PP, guys. But turn on our PP filter, which stands for double peak. Well, peak, peak. <laughs> Because, you know, we have a peak here, and then we got a little peak here, and we get a little pee-pee, pee-pee action going. Oh my gosh. <laughs> so, we're going to take our LFO number one here, and we're going to be begin our modulation. Turn up the resonance. And in essence, we're just going to be making this bad boy talk. When we peak these two waveforms and we start to move them in towards each other, it basically just recreates the illusion that the sound is talking. Um, it just, I don't know, that's the way uh, the EQ works on this. It just kind of creates that effect. I shouldn't even say illusion. It literally sounds like it's talking. And that's going, we're going to call it a day for that. We're going to call it a day. Now we have to move into the effects section. But before we do that, we have to change up the pitch, modulate it a little bit. Oops. Um, take our LFO2 here, go into the matrix, take LFO2, and we're going to put this on global master tune. And we can just get a little bit of an action here on the pitch. Okay, I like it on one-fourth. That sounds pretty damn good to me. So now we're going to go ahead and turn on the distortion. And we're actually going to be using the distortion pretty lightly. Just go ahead and turn up the drive. And as we start to do that, we really crunch up the sound. It almost makes it sound cleaner. We're distorting the higher end frequencies. And we're almost getting rid of all those disgusting lower end frequencies that the filter is has the poor side effect of producing. So now we're gonna go into our phaser. Go ahead and turn on the phaser. Drop the rate down to zero, as well as the depth and the frequency. Oh my gosh, it sounds like it's processing through a guitar amp. We love that effect, but we're gonna be modulating it, making it sound a little bit cooler. That's a nice little trick. If you guys want something to sound a little bit more meatier, just put on a phaser, rate zero, depth zero, and frequency to zero. So just by modulating it up a little bit. And you know what? That'll work just fine. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to be creating a notch filter with the EQ. So go ahead and select our middles peak here. It's, this is literally what a peak filter is, by the way, in case you're wondering. But we're going to be inverting that. Drop it down to zero. Right, yeah, that's exactly what we're doing. That makes a notch filter. Perfect. Now what are we going to do with it? We're going to be modulating it backwards, and it's going to sound dope. But now the sound doesn't sound too thick. It's not thick enough, if you get what I'm talking about. Not thick. Thick with two Cs. We need to turn on the compressor. Turn on multiband. Oh, that's it. I have the mix up way too high on the phaser. And now we're talking here. The multiband compressor is perfect whenever the sound seems like it's lacking something or you're just missing out altogether. Um, so now we could just, you know, add on a little bit of hyper for some stereo width. The settings are completely up to you. This is just what I'm doing. You can feel free to be a copycat or not. <laughs> and I think that sounds pretty damn good. So without further ado, guys, my name is Shane from Rocket Powered Sound, and I will catch you guys in the next serum tutorial. Thank you.